so for this particular video, um, I'd like to look at the nature of intelligence that speaks to us so hugely in the healing work. AI, often people speaks about artificial intelligence. There's an authentic intelligence that hides within um, a certain language of the body that speaks through pain. So today I want to go over a very interesting model given to us by Rother Robert Lethem called the fear avoidance model, which describes ways in which inner dance um, breaks and recreates patterns um, that are very often coursing through this language of the body. Um, according to Lethem, pain um, leads to two possible cycles that could either repeat something old or break into something new. So on the first um, of two possible directionalities experience can bring us to, we could either maybe experience the pain which leads us into, let's bring out the red. Um, you know, when we experience pain, it's not very pleasant. So it's very natural that we become uh, afraid of it, which then um, obviously would make us um, avoid anything that causes the pain, which then would um, force us to stop using a part of the body that's experiencing the pain. At the same time, there could be an actual emotional response that stems from the pain. Um, which brings about a cycle that keeps the, the experience, the fear, and the avoidance going on and on in a circular um, cycle. So the other possible way of experiencing the pain is in fact to go into a space where we I think green might be nicer don't you think um, or instead of experiencing the pain through fear we could go into the absence of it um, which to lessen allows us to go into a confrontation which eventually would lead to maybe let's put it out in blue supposedly the the point is to go into a recovery so this is very relevant for people who look especially at healing models Um, recovery being the supposed goal. So um, basically I'd like to look at this whole thing as a whole systems model that uh, meditates on like how does inner dance work in bringing this about, bringing this about, leading to this um, I feel this is a very simple way of looking at things. 
I've watched people go into recovery only partly. Even the deepest healings often uh, have to contend with the fact that in this world, pain is very real. And the brain unto itself at the most basic level is programmed to, to avoid pain from early childhood. Um, this condition is just so primal that it's, it exists in animals, it exists in plants, it exists in all living organisms. So that the point in um, living in this world is in fact to go into... Oh, that doesn't do anything. It's uh, to go into pleasure. Um, we're here to, to seek for this and to avoid this somehow. Um, I feel to understand this, we need to go into a neurological mapping. Like, uh, how do we get programmed? How are we conditioned to like focus on this? really um, before really understanding the role of music and the role of the body movements the role of emotions uh, that takes place within the inner dance process um, how do we reactivate or disactivate uh, unactivate the normal activations that happen outside of the spiritual experience. Um, we have to look at addictions just as much as we have to look at avoidance um, before I think we can fully, really understand in an operational level why we avoid and why we um, get attached. How do we get addicted again and again? in a way that these patterns will stay with us over the period of a lifetime and more. Um, inner dance changes these patterns that allow us to go into this part. Um, but a lot of the experiences can in fact be very, very temporal so that within the workshop, within the session, it's very easy in fact to bring this about um, and yet, people keep shifting from here to there, here to there, here to there, because um, confrontation is really just a small part of what we can assist. I feel one of the words that could um, do away with this, looking for something more integratively, alternative is how do we bring about an observation instead of always confronting and fighting something that seems cyclical and will ever come back instead of recovery um, would there be in fact a transformation to take the place of just Recovering, because uh, when we look at recovery, re means to go back, and cover means to hide. Um, so there's something about fear avoidance that um, deals with a cognitive dissonance, which describes the mind's inability to confront truth, truth that has many, many much deeper levels than what we are normally accustomed to. So going back to maybe uh, this part of the cycle, um, the brain follows a rewards and punishment pathway system that we receive as very early training devices. So to look at it from a neurological perspective and maybe in another video we can go into the role of tr neurotransmitters that um, keeps us going. The brain has four basic functionalities it operates from that um, initially receives inputs from pain and pleasure. So when we experience something good, 
um, we basically learn to move our bodies. Oh, sorry, that's not writing. Just bought that. Um, let's keep it black. W when we experience something good, then we learn to move our bodies in basic ways that become like part of strength, allows us to act from will, um, so that if, if it feels good, if it looks like it's going to bring about something good, you know, it could be chocolate ice cream, it could be um, going out to the movies with a friend, the body has to move towards that uh, place of pleasure. And if it if it's like a hot fire, if it's uh, a sharp object, we 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 have to train the body not to go there. So motor functions would be one of the first of the four um, operations the body is conditioned um, by. Second would be memory. Um, and there are these brain centers that are in charge of these the motor functions being um, operated by the nucleus accumbens, memory being the hippocampus. Um, we need to remember uh, what it was that brought in good stuff as opposed to the experiences that bring about the shitty, crappy, <laughs> uh, ouchy, and not so yummy, but more the yucky um, things that causes this. So that we could avoid it, uh, and then we remember, yeah, like what is the yummy, yummy things to 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 act upon. Uh, third would be um, attention, and this is regulated by the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, the PFC of the brain, the executive governor. We call it the boss. Um, so in a way, we need to utilize certain neurotransmitters, which was explained in the first video in the vesica pisces that allows us to be as present as possible to make sure that we don't get hurt, we don't die, we have to be present as to how to cross traffic, how to avoid danger. Um, at the same time, we need to pay attention to uh, make sure that we get the good stuff. Otherwise, um, uh, we're going to miss out. Uh, the fourth would be maybe the most obvious to many people on the spiritual pathway. The brain regulates emotion because emotion, along with pain and pleasure, um, gives us a sense of what might be proper, what might be good, what might suck, what might not uh, be a very productive aspect of our lives that brings success and actually brings about like more pain. So in effect, um, I'm just bringing in some of the neurology and the brain processes to help us understand as we go along, how do we bring about transformation um, in effect, uh, bringing about maybe greater information to to how different aspects of music h how do you touch the body in different ways that assure that there is a much longer transformation um, that doesn't really tempt people that we hold to keep going back there um, there are invisible things happening in the body especially that could inform general psychology uh, that might not be very, very visible to even uh, therapists who might have had training. Uh, there are certain things operating within inner dance that's very, very body-based. Um, and so to go into a sense of integration, uh, there are several things that are happening in the transformation process we have available to us that are, in fact, maybe quite new and might be avoided by doctors in general because um, the trainings are more or less designed 
especially in the usage of medicine, chemicals, and surgery, to keep the pain avoidance going. Um, there's a lot of profit and there's a lot of money to be made. In fact, to keep this alive, uh, it doesn't make as much money to bring patients uh, to this because if you know how to conduct this really well, maybe one time with a person could bring about an actual transformation so quickly that uh, th this doesn't need to uh, keep going. So, so much of industry, in fact, depends upon uh, the activation of uh, this level of causation. Um, so something Inner Dance has been doing uh, over a long period of time now uh, has been to signify a shift in the addiction processes. Like when we look at this, th this doesn't really speak to the rewards system as much as the stress response mechanism. Um, pain avoidance deals with the activation of the hormone cortisol so that when we experience stress, the body is designed to really avoid the danger um, so that patterns could ensue, patterns that are very difficult to break. Now, what I'd like to study with you in the long term is how do patterns break, patterns that are held by behavior, motor functions, kinesthesia, proprioception. How do patterns break in terms of remembrance of early childhood and adult memories that just keep going back in loops, not really changing, even as we try our best to change our minds. These memory patterns are so ingrained in us. Um, how are then we also too brainy, too mental, too, too much in our th thought systems, um, so that no matter how much we try to become positive, there are um, negativities always at work. And obviously emotions would be the most cyclical for many of us. But you can't just instruct someone to feel better. Sometimes when an authentic AI is at work, people need to go into the dark spaces inside their bodies to come face to face with um, what, what this is basically speaking to them. Um, the inner dance using music, using body position, using touch, using pressure, using many, many techniques have found a way to distract the rewards and stress response systems so that certain neurotransmitters could be um, shifted from from place of fear towards a place of no fear and confrontation so that a possible observation could come about. Um, this has to do with uh, reshifting of dopamine, especially dopamine neurotransmitters that normally go into having to be strong, having to be agile, having to be uh, present, having to be attentive, having to be um, emotionally uh, rhythmic, um, uh, all of which are situated alongside these operational areas of the nucleus accumbens, the hippocampus, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, and the amygdala, uh, which is to say we, we are programmed to filter everything we know to be ouchy or yummy to go to these um, on a daily basis a and if we were to, to, to go from here to here there has to be a distraction from what's called the dopaminergic the, the dopamine rewards pathway system um, it, it has to be unconditioned and it has to be replaced it has to be redirected into mysterious areas of the body uh, mostly the brain that signifies 
um, something very, very new, uh, which for many people is a very, very difficult place to get to. Um, y you know, there, th there's this part of the brain that starts to get activated when th this is at work, th this activation is at work. Some people feel it, especially at the back of the head, um, at the base of the skull. Um, I'm not going to map this out yet because it demands another video, but it's basically um, areas in the pons, the uh, striatum, um, it, 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 there are like these gateways in the brain that opens up filtration patterns that inhibit um, life force from passing through cell to cell, synapse to synapse. Um, it, electricity basically is trapped whenever we, 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 we keep this going. And when you hit certain of these mysterious, almost reptilian primitive brain centers, um, that are largely inactive because we, are, we we're thinking too much and we're too emotional. When the inner dance happens, um, that reactivation is at work. And, and um, these new op operations would be uh, called surprise, would be called um, shock, would be called um, spontaneity. As you can see, I'm trying to uh, maybe keep all of these in a series of letters. Um, these are maybe what brings about the confrontation part that Robert Lesson points out in his um, fear avoidance chart. Um, when you sustain the inner dance process through certain ways of facilitating music, another S that comes out would be uh, seeing. Um, so in large part, like what I'm seeing in this right now that could assist Robert Lethem or his model to become a lot more uh, integrative is that th th this is only partly true. It, this can only stay in the red so much. Um, there's something about the Vesica Pisces that would jump back at us. Uh, maybe if I could mess this up. Um, these are two parts of the same thing. Th these are two eyes. Sorry if they look like boobs. but the, the, So maybe let's <laughs> put something there. Th these are two parts that need to um, confront each other. Th they are the same thing in, in large part maybe there's a way of like folding this later on that helps us to see that there's in fact just a one like a one circle a one mandala a one space that brings us back into the nature of authenticity and intelligence that redefines what we normally consider pain in the energy process there is no such thing as pain because eventually Everything is energy, and then everything is information. So in fact, we have to uncover a lot of these terminologies that are very prominent in the realms of healing. Um, fear needs to be redefined. Avoidance needs to be redefined. Depression needs to be redefined. Pain and pleasure needs to be redefined. And it's really up to us on how we experience whatever is given to us, like I feel. Um, so I want to bring this up before going into later videos uh, because I feel uh, each of these are important to observe prior to looking at much, much more complex whole systems approaches that brings about a paradigmatic shift, you know, a paradigm shift, a shift into a uh, whole systems thinking that emerges out of the inner dance process. So thank you for listening.
and um, looking forward to seeing you on the next video.